Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So today's video, we are going to take a close look at the new Sharpen model. And this model is the Retro Max. It's the final form of the Retro Sharpen virtual pinball machines. And in this video, I just also wanted to do like a quick overview, like what I think of it, what's my personal building experience. And we're going to talk a little bit of a history about what is the evolution of the Sharpen pinball arcade machines. I've basically reviewed all of them and it's a quite interesting piece of technology. By the way, you need to build it is also a very interesting concept because this is just a DIY kit that you're basically getting at home and you need to put it together. But when you're going to look at all of the machines I've built, this is basically like the next level. It's not like the biggest challenge I had when it comes to building stuff, but I can say like for your typical average person who just know how to hold a screwdriver, it's going to be quite challenging. So the Sharpen basically started out like a bar top virtual pinball machine and I personally really love it. I'm just going to be honest, that is still one of my favorite ways to play. But the Sharpen Retro Max is something different. It's like this next level when you're looking at the bar tops. The one you're seeing over here are not for sale anymore because this first generation of Sharpens were coming with a 23 or 24 inch display. And we do also have like the light and the ultra version. But in the end, it was a, such a blast playing some Zen pinball and some other pinball machines on this machine. And this is basically where it all started for me. So fast forwarding, then we have like the new model. It came with a smaller display, a 21.5 inch display if I'm saying it correctly. It also came with a front glass that gives more like an authentic virtual pinball feeling to it. Because I think that was just missing with the previous model. Specification wise, it was more like the same that we have seen with the previous model with the light and the Pro model and that's it. We also had a review here on the channel about the Sharpen King and this thing was absolutely a beast. It was a full size machine and this was like the next level. So basically this new Retro Max model is between the bar tops and the full size machine and that I think is pretty damn interesting. In this video I don't want to like include a full tutorial, I just want to talk about my experience when it comes building this machine. When you're looking at the tutorial itself, it's very easy going and it looks easy peasy lemon squeezy. But I can tell you there were some things in the build that I personally didn't like at all. I did have experience with the previous model so I knew like how to assemble some things. But there were some minor adjustments I needed to make. The building process of the cabin itself was quite smooth, that part wasn't that very hard to do and I must say when putting it together it was a lot of fun. If you're going to assemble the monitor it's going to be quite challenging, it needs to be in the right position and the height of course otherwise it will not fit perfectly with the plexi. Okay the sticker quality is in my opinion a little bit mixed, I will talk about it later with the cabinet but it was quite a challenge to put it on. Another problem I noticed like the cables of the counter board were too short so it was just dangling over there. I have no way to putting it anywhere. I did have some spare cables so I can basically like, avoid that. So here at the left you can see over here I managed to put it over there with the double sided tape 3M that I got from the package itself. I also implement the TV box on a different way and the reason is just simply because I just want to put it on a different position. If you need to get into the machine itself, you need to remove the bottom plate and if you're going to put everything on the bottom plate, it's almost impossible to get this thing disassembled from some maintenance. Alright, so the first thing that we need to assemble is the back box. And the back box, I must say that I didn't do a very nice job. I realized, crap, I already assembled the speakers. So I disassembled it, put everything through the hole and now we can like assemble the back box. So I must say like you need to be very careful what you're going to do. Here at the side we can see like it's been attached with a couple of these brackets. The tablet goes in here like that, but I'm not a big fan of it. And the reason why, it still wiggles around. I'm going to use like these gummy things to put it in position. But you need to use double sided tape. And guess what? Yeah, after a day or so, my tablet came loose. And that's the thing that I don't like about basically like double sided taping everything. The tablet is just too heavy to put it in the back works with some double sided tape and some brackets. So here he is, the Retro Max, the Sharpen in his final form. And I will say like when I'm messing around with it, there are some things that you really need to know when it comes to configuring. So first of all, the idea behind having an extra monitor inside this machine is quite interesting. But this thing still works on the GT King like the Ultra. And if you think about it, Android doesn't have the option to have like a second display option. Because the Android boxes only have one HDMI out and there was no software. So we created this special software to give like the option to have like the scores and the back glass. But my thing is like, I do like it, 
but we did all of this hassle for only an extra screen and is it actually worth it? Also we're going to talk about the overall quality and my personal experience playing the games today. So to begin with, we do have Plexi and that's something that I personally really love because it gives me like an authentic feeling to it, like with the last model we reviewed here when it comes to the bar top models. But then we're going to get the side strips at the left and at the right. I must say, they feel okay. They're quite a sharp edge, so they're not super comfortable. I think it's just a common problem. And another thing I personally still missing is one at the front that would be so much better because it gives more like this complete feel to the bezel around the Plexi. At the back box we're going to find this 10.1 inch old school Chinese tablet. The tablet is working just fine, it's got a very nice panel. When we slide out the back here we can see everything has been sampled. I just used this glue for like making the review, but I think I'm going to like freaking hot glue everything or using this special multi kit to getting this bloody thing out of place. But what I do like about it is the audio quality. When you're looking at your traditional pinball machine, this thing looks kind of weird. I'm just going to be honest. Like when you're looking at the back box, the arrows are pointing at the back. Normally it's like basically reversed and like the camera itself looks nice, but we do have normally an angle to it. So when you're looking at the way how it looks, like the plex here you're using is absolutely amazing groomed legs and they have this very nice angle to it. So it gives more better stability like it should be. Every pinball leg will be assembled with two M8 gigantic bolts. And on the bottom we're going to get ourselves the cups that gives the extra stability. But the main question remains, doggy? Yes. What do you think of it? Do you like the pinball machine? Hmm? Do you like it? Yes. I think he likes it. Yeah. Let's talk about the decal quality, because he changed some things out over here. So when you're looking at the decal quality, it looks very nice. Like, it's okay. But there was some particular thing that quite annoys me. The first thing he changed out, as you can see here at the front panel, he changed out the kind of quality. At the beginning we have these thick vinyl stickers, but now we get like a cheaper version of it. And the cheaper version is not that great. Like they look amazing, but here you can see like it starts to peel off. And in the manual it says like you need to not cut it off and basically paste it over there at the corner. But I just cut it off over here and normally we don't need to have this issue. And this is not the only place, like here at the corner. Here you can see there is no problem, but on the other side we do have the same issue. And you can feel it, there is no glue whatsoever. So I think I need to use some own glue just to basically put it in position. But let's talk about the controls. So at the front we're going to get ourselves six buttons and at the right and the left side we're going to get two buttons each. Then we're going to get here the navigation button at the left, we can navigate through menu and at the right we can enter, go back in the menu or launch the ball. So here you can see with Zen Pinball it works like a charm, but there's only one of the couple's systems that will work very well. And that's a little bit of a problem, something I need to point out, like you shall need to use the freaking remotes. And at the right and the left we're going to get ourselves the nudge and the flipper, but the nudge doesn't work so far I know with every single game. So also depending basically how it works. When it comes to delays with the flipper and the button, I don't notice any delays whatsoever. Over here we're going to get two remotes. The left one is for the B-Link or Android box and the right one for the tablet that you need to connect separately. And the reason why, because of course the right one we need to power on of the display itself or the tablet. Of course you can always do this manually because it's a touch screen of course, because it's actually a tablet. Also if you need to refresh for getting the scores and stuff like that, that's one of the most convenient ways. Then we're going to get ourselves the air remote for navigating through the menu and you're going to need it. You can use the buttons at the front and at the right to navigate. But the other thing I personally love is using a mouse. Just a basic mouse, put it on top, plug it into the cable I attach to the Android box in the inside and it's so much easier to navigate. Alright, so how about the navigation and the applications? So navigation through the menu is going to be a mix, you know, like using physical buttons, but yeah, I'm just using the mouse course. Enter the Play Store and here we can find all kinds of games that we can use on this machine. But take consideration, despite you can use it, it doesn't say that it will work with the physical buttons. And there are only a handful of games that work perfectly on this machine. There are all kinds of applications you can install, already mentioned that, but Pinball Deluxe, Zen Pinball, Zachariah Pinball and Pinball Arcade are one of my favorite ones to play. And that is the thing that we're going to do. Zachariah Pinball has more like the classic tables, then we have Pinball Arcade, the familiar tables, 
and the Zen Pinball. Take consideration, you need to hold a buy of these freaking tables and Pinball Deluxe is more like free to play with some advertisements. But that game is a lot of fun, but we'll show you later on. So, but how does the extra display works? So, basically you need to use the online service. And this is a program called Sharpen Score. You need to put that one first up. You need to log in to your account and that's the thing basically that you need to do. When you have entered your account details, logged in, you need to do the same thing with the application that you need to download separately on the B-Link. This is the Sharpen Send. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is basically log into the account itself. I personally hate it that I need to make an account and sign up. And this works all through the Wi-Fi internet. I don't like it because if I don't have Wi-Fi, I don't have the score that doesn't work with the tablet. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But nevertheless, when you're logged in, here you can see some presets. Here we're going to get Zin Pinball, Williams, Pinball Arcade, Zagaraya, and Deluxe. So basically, these are like the ways to play, and you can also make them custom if you want to mess around with it. So let's choose Zen Pinball. When choosing Zen Pinball, it will ask you like if you agreed, press OK, and you're good to go. All right, so start now, and we can basically like transfer the information to the pinball. If it doesn't work, refresh the tablet, and it works after some time. Okay, next thing that we need to do is boot up into the Zen Pinball because that's the first game that we're going to play. Refresh the tablet and you will see that it will work. It will have the communication through the internet. And basically what it does, you can see it for example, like it basically have this magnifying glass and it just captures a part of the screen. And here you can see it works very well. It's a quite interesting way and a lot of hassle for getting basically this tiny freaking score on the tablet. It's cool, but what a hassle. Okay, so let's start with the Zechariah Pinball. Let's choose a classic table and let's just have some pinball fun. Alright, so Pinball Arcade, absolutely amazing graphical pinball machine. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, simply because when you can see over here that we have this weird angle looking at the pinball machine. It's like having a pinball machine inside a pinball machine. And that is what you don't have with Zen Pinball and Pinball Deluxe. So those two are still my favorites to play. But what do I think of it? The overall experience is okay. But it is not perfect. To begin with, the extra display inside this machine, it's cool, but it's kind of weird with the tablet. When you're looking at the software capability, I think it's pretty genius that you can just like transfer like this magnifying glass onto an other display. But you need to have Wi-Fi. For example, I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I had some issues with setting it up at the first place. But if it works, it works very well. It's just a cool addition to the pinball machine. But personally, I think it is all the hassle necessary. Like, can you not like use one single screen like the bar top? Or I think maybe this thing is even better if you go and slap a PC in it and use the 10 inch display beside using this freaking tablet. And overall, I had like a lot of fun playing on this machine. I already point out like the things I didn't like about the decal stuff like that. Let me know in the comments what do you think of a pinball machine like this or would you prefer to buy an Ed Games or keep one up or build a machine from scratch yourself. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one with a big family and it would be great to see you in the next video.